El Salvador woman spends six years in jail <coughs> for having a stillborn birth. That's our story that we're talking about here today, and let's get a little bit of a sense of what we're talking about. We're talking about the tiny little nation state here of El Salvador. Give you a sense of scale that's uh, roughly from here to here is roughly 50 miles. So you could probably, you can imagine San Miguel. <clears throat> yeah, actually, this might be roughly speaking, maybe about the same distance as New York City is from Philadelphia. So this would be like this tiny little area if that was a nation state. And there's about 6 million people that live in El Salvador. And the uh, Republic of El Salvador is the smallest and most densely populated country in Central America. It was controlled by Mesoamerican nations, especially the Lake of the Mayans, and then later the Cuscatls. And, uh, uh Cuscatleks, I'm sorry, Cuscatleks, archaeological monument. Okay, and their Olmec were there at one point, then the Spanish came in. Yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's a big old yada, 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 but yeah, we, we we're limited in time here, folks. I want to get this done here. Let's get back to the story now. Now you got a bit of a context there. These are basically radically anti-abortion laws. Like, no abortions, no exceptions. Go to jail. Do not pass go. Do not, yeah, do not pass go. Go directly to jail. <clears throat> yeah. El Salvador woman freed after six years in jail following stillbirth. Cindy Arazzo was accused of aggregated homicide after an obstetric emergency. <clears throat> a woman, hmm, let me get rid of your title here. Rid of this title. There you go. All right, a woman, you know what? Let me make sure I didn't realize so. So El Salvador, I think I had it covered up here. So there you get the sense of the scale. So from San Miguel, to Santa Ana, roughly here. This is the space where we're talking about New York and Philadelphia there. So, give you that sense of space. Uh, so, uh, the story itself, Cindy Arazzo was from San Salvador, was granted conditional freedom on Wednesday after six years in jail. Conditional. Not even like, yo man, sorry, we totally uh, did this inhuman thing. Conditional freedom. Morena Herrera, head of the Citizens Group for the Decriminalization of Abortion, said that Arazzo, who had a son age 10, had an obstetric emergency when she was eight months pregnant. She was accused of attempting to end the pregnancy and charged with aggravated homicide. A year after her conviction, her sentence was reduced to 10 years. Well, isn't that nice? Dozens of women have been convicted for manslaughter, homicide, and aggravated homicide after having miscarriages, stillbirths, and other obstetric emergencies since El Salvador introduced a total ban on abortion in 1998. All right. Never mind. That's uh, whatever you are. I'm not going to. Yeah, probably. Just for that little bit, well, uh, the Guardian copy strike or whatever this freaking video, you freaking morons. Uh, but one of the women released just last year, Evelyn Hernandez, then 21, had her 30-year sentence overturned at a retrial. Could face a third trial as prosecutors seek to overturn her acquittal. Jeez, what kind of venom must you have in your heart <clears throat> to do such things? But this, by the way, especially, th this is this is what it looks like. Like, okay, I just let you know that I am, I am spiritually and ideationally and morally and, and I uh, well civically even I would say I'm, I'm against abortion all kinds of levels and I'm against any kind of legitimization of abortion in terms of uh, cultural acceptance uh, under except under certain conditions where you might understand why people got abortions I'm not necessarily looking to shame people though either I'm not looking to hunt people down like looking for that but uh, in general I believe that abortion is probably something that you should never look at as something other than, well, one of the reasons why we have abortions, that we allow abortions at all, is because of something like this. This is what you end up uh, producing. And you will. 
and you'll end up basically <coughs> I mean the feminists are right about some things and I'll tell you they're right about how women not having access to abortion in the circumstances in which we still find ourselves in the 21st century significantly puts them at a power disadvantage with men in in many many ways they are the old they can't run away from their mistakes only the men can do that women can't do that and there's all kinds of ways that especially when you have <laughs> by the way one of the downturns of uh, downsides i i am actually still for <coughs> extended family structures wish i had been a part of one and never I never ended up being part of one. I have my own nuclear family structure, but I would prefer extended family. But the downturn to extended family structure is the amount of social coercive pressure that they can put on human beings. Like if you get pregnant and the pressure that's put on you to basically surrender your life. I'm a Bill of Rights person, and abortion is one of those areas so that the Bill of Rights just doesn't neatly describe. There's no right answer. When it comes to Bill of Rights standards, and we live in a pluralistic land now. In the case of uh, El Salvador, I don't know how pluralistic or, or not they are in nature, but I would hope at some level they would come to understand that. Uh, well, I don't. I don't believe that the choice is we're just going to like love abortion, celebrate abortions, and have abortions on demand under any circumstance and all the way up to the time of birth. No, that's not realistic either. That That is, that. there's no way that, that significant portions of, certainly in American society, uh, can live with that. And, and, and for a variety of reasons, some of which are moral, some of which are civic, some of which are other. Uh, and you're gonna have to come to some sort of resolution with that group, and they're gonna have to come to a resolution with you because they don't want this. Marino Herrera, head of the citizens group for the decriminalization of abortion, said that Arazzo, who had a son age 10, had an obstetric emergency when she was eight months pregnant. She was accused of attempting to end the pregnancy and charged with aggravated homicide. A year after her conviction, her sentence was reduced to 10 years. Dozens of women, dozens of women, and I, and I think I read that already, but that bears repeating, that bears repeating, amen. So that's the uh, circumstance, and here you have uh, another entry here. Cindy Arazzo was released on probation on Tuesday. Released on probation. On probation, they didn't just let her go. And say, oh man, we're sorry for being... No, actually, okay, so just so everybody knows, like, I don't really believe that... Uh, well, first off, I don't believe that patriarchy in and of itself is a horrible thing. I don't believe that matriarchy is in and of itself a horrible thing or any other form of how human beings might organize their world to expedite the uh, opportunities for people to live lives of their own choosing. And there are people that would prefer patriarchal structures and some matriarchal and some other structures that we're not even talking about. Uh, but what I'm against is any kind of notion of coercion within those structures, especially generational coercion, which is pretty much how human beings mostly transfer our data to the next generation we do it uh, coercively we we don't we don't give them the tools to explore we put ourselves in them and to assure that they are us in the end so that you know we got allies <laughs> basically so I don't know what's going on in uh, El Salvador as far as the what is being transferred or not transferred, but uh, I can tell you that when you put a, a a half of the species in a fundamental physiological life-altering, perhaps yeah, well, basically rest of your life kind of altering circumstance that uh, fundamentally in so many ways it's it's the man who gets away the boy who gets away and it is the man or the boy that that doesn't have to suffer the lifelong stigma of having a child <clears throat> outside of wedlock and now I know you might think that that stigma is gone and it is not as nearly impactful as it once is but it's still there and I could assure you if you ever outlawed abortion it would return so that's that's why like i'm 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 fundamentally with uh, working on if we want to end abortions we have to create the conditions in which abortions uh, uh happen and we have to do it in a non-coercive way not in a coercive way so the, the the method is not going to be to ban all abortions 
and the method is not going to be to allow abortions on demand all the way up to to birth. People are going to have to sit down and some have and come to some sort of uh, pragmatic understanding of uh, everyone's going to have to uh, to give a little just for the, the the usefulness of all of us in this land being able to coexist without having to consider one another evil because of this or that belief. And we don't need to do that. The only people that really want us and need us to do that are the uh, Citadelians that, uh, well, these are the, it's a word I use. It, it, there's no, I don't think there's any group called Citadelians. It's just a word I use to describe folks that uh, essentially they have the capacity to be anywhere in the world anytime they want, al well, almost anywhere in the world, anytime they want within six hours and have all the, uh, the, the, the layer upon layer of security uh, going with them so that they are wherever they go a veritable citadel and there's very few people that are like that I would imagine there may be at most 300 citadelians in the world and in America maybe 70 or 80 that's just I mean I could be wildly off obviously but it's kind of what I have in my head the scarcity of what we're talking about as far as citadelians are concerned and these are the people these small these are these are at most triple digit figures that we're talking about as far as the number of citadelians in the world that at the heart control maybe 85 to 90 percent of the opportunities of uh, most of the humans that are are within city grasp i'll say if you're within city grasp especially the further out you are the less likely you are to be impacted by them but even then you're still going to have some degrees of impact still so and that's the way that i look at the world and that's the way i see the world and i see that this is uh this is uh most likely actually this is this is the coercive patriarchy this is literally what a coercive patriarchy does it puts because if this was not a patriarchy, I can guarantee you there's no way. If women were co-equals in this land, they would not have such draconian laws. There would be some degree of compromise that would be made. It would have to be made. If you want to pluralistically live with others, despite their beliefs, you're going to have to. This is one of those areas that there is just, there is no, there is no answer. No one life really is more important than another not even the 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 unborn life as opposed to the mother or the mother to the unborn life so you have to come up with a pragmatic solution uh that uh that doesn't allow for the wholesale uh abortion of of human life and the wholesale habitual dehumanization of humanity itself in the process the heuristic institutions that you build when you constantly support and pursue and uh, and um, support and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, perpetuate the the mythology of uh, a, a life not being a life until it is outside the body of of dehumanizing life before it's born. That is that is just something that humanity as a whole unless you're one of the citadelians you really don't want that you don't want that give the state the power that they would have in a world with people that build those type of heuristic institutions within because it's a short hop skip and a jump from the easy dehumanization of unborn human life to the dehumanization of born human life for for matters such as what they might believe like the notion for instance that uh, somehow just being a racist is enough to get you destroyed which is absurd it's not i would rather live there are racists i've met these racists uh i haven't i haven't talked to them in years but uh i i've met these racists that uh I'm, to be fair most of the racists that i've ever run across i would not want to live next to but there are racists that even though they're racist they respect the standards the bills of rights and so they they treat people equally not because they like them just because they recognize the practical uh, usefulness of uh of uh, basically okay i'm going to treat you like a human in exchange for you treating me like one so that 
Because, listen, I acknowledge, even if I don't like you, I kind of need you. That's kind of what it's at for, 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 for folks. So there's some races I could absolutely live next to. There's some people that their their racism is basically, I mean, this is a form of racism, but it, but they would be racist. Uh, their racism is, you know, I, I kind of think my race is better. kind of think it's smarter or whatever. I mean, I think it's pretty stupid and moronic to think such things with all the things that we know about humanity today. But, but never you mind. I don't really care or mind if you think that in and of itself. If you think black people are better than white people, I really don't care. I do care, though, that if you think because of, you think because of this or that, that that means that you can thug on people who belong into the group that you don't like. That in the public civic square... That you, that you have a right to not act like you are a member of the United States of America and you are governed by the one true king, which is the Bill of Rights. We're all governed by the Bill of Rights. We all treat each other by the Bill of Rights. We can hate each other as much as we want. We still find a way for us to exist. I mean, I, would, I, I think that I could coexist with a racist that respects the king, the Bill of Rights, as my neighbor better than I can in SJW who doesn't respect the Bill of Rights. And unfortunately, the DNC version of SJW is, is all about getting rid of the whole concept of due process itself. Even calling the Bill of Rights a uh, patriarchal white supremacist construct, that's pretty really dangerous when the Bill of Rights are so... Is this young woman, if she had the Bill of Rights... Would she be, would, 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 we, would we be able to justifiably do this to her in America? She has rights in America. If she was an American citizen, I wish she was an American citizen. I bet you she appreciates freedom a lot. We should probably maybe do that. If she wants to, I mean, maybe she loves her country and she wants to stay there and whatever. But if not, man, listen, you you appreciate freedom. Come to America. Let's get this woman. She should be a political prisoner. Let's get her to America. Let her live in America. Look at that. I don't mean I don't know anything about her. Maybe I'll find out this one of those rare one of those cases where no no man she really no no. I mean highly unlikely. I'm 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 willing to believe uh, it's uh, it's highly likely that uh, she's in there because of a stillborn birth and uh, you know she looked pretty strong there. I like I like the expression on her face. So let's get her to America. We mean we need being people like her. You know I view Americans by the way probably like people that are Americans are people that are willing to submit to the king, to the Bill of Rights. You submit to the Bill of Rights and you live the the edict of the king uh, in your life, in your business, in your family, in your laws. Then you all right with me. I don't care what your personal beliefs are, what you do behind closed doors. I don't care any of that stuff. I don't care. We can all worship. Oh, well, not worship. I don't want to. I mean that. We can all. Uh, oh, uh, we 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 can all uh, celebrate the king. We can all celebrate the king. Uh, the Bill of Rights. The only can you. You know what? You don't even have to call the Bill of Rights king. You can call the Bill of Rights queen. You can call the Bill of Rights them. You can, whatever you want to call the emperor. You can call the Bill of Rights president. No, don't call the Bill of Rights president because the president is a, kind of like a lowborn. We should be thinking of the presidency as kind of a, an administrative role more than a, uh, the kind of a, a almost royal uh, power that we seem to have given it uh, now. But anyway, I mean, for me, I would, I would end the, I would bust up the office of president. I would do the Rajavan model. I would have a male and a female. I would have uh, three males and three females from three different parts of, of the country that would serve on a presidency council and each one of them would be given fundamental areas that they govern over in times of emergency and so there were one would might handle foreign or whatever but the, each of one, one of them has the power in an emergency situation in a certain so you know we, we basically we dilute the power of the presidency from one person to six and we have three males and three females just saying i mean that's one way you could get rid of all this nonsense and stop everything focused on one human being one human being that we then because I mean, when the constitution was created it was just a few hundred thousand whatever a couple million and maybe uh now we have 300 and some odd million human beings concentrated on a battle between two individuals over the power of the world i mean how sexy is that no no seriously for a lot of people how sexy is that how demagogue empowering is that? 
Let's bust up the office presidency. There you go. And then she doesn't go to prison. We don't write idiot laws like this. We recognize the reality of power. When we have a uh, pluralistic land, when we get to a circumstance where young girls and women can fully expect that there are methodologies by which they can avoid having to make the, having to ha even avoid having an abortion decision having to be made, then we could talk about uh, more uh, restrictions put on abortion, maybe, possibly, but that wouldn't be for our generation. It'll be for the generations to come to decide those issues. And uh, this is one of those issues that I don't think you can settle for now. I don't think one generation should settle it. I think it's a conversation each generation should have and come to some degree of consensus and, and, and keep going it that way. But you can do that if you have systems where you have diluted power structures, at least at the top. Uh, but I digress. At any rate, there you go. There you go. Cindy Arazzo, I'm glad you're free. And uh, I say, I say this. I say that uh, we uh, start a petition. Somebody do this. I don't have the energy. I suck. Get Cindy Arazzo. Get a GoFundMe, whatever, to raise funds. Figure out what do we got to do to get her declared a po political asylum person, if she wanted to, if she wanted to. And get her and her family over and I'll be like her and got to be like probably like 30 or 40 of them right around each other. Get them all in here. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. That'd be cool. I'm for it. She will love. She will love a Bill of Rights America. She will. And with that, I say uh, well, thank you for watching and uh, have a great rest of your day. Because I mean, if you don't. Somebody else will. I mean, although maybe both of you can together. You can find some that somebody else that's having a good time. Maybe because of them, you can actually have a good rest of your day. I love you. These are why I bring these tips up to you so you can make your life better. Of course. Of course. <laughs>